Let's start off with an unusually short, for the agenda that is, introduction to the myriad issues with which Europe is contending. Give us six minutes and we'll give you ten answers to a range of troubling questions that for Europeans, for better or for worse, need to answer for themselves. Helping us do that, author and Harvard historian Neil Ferguson. How many refugees, in your view, can Europe absorb? In total, probably more than two million. You could even imagine economically five million, but that's an economic answer. The question is, how many can they absorb politically? And that may be a much smaller number. Would you say that refugees are part of the answer to Europe's demographic deficit problems? They could be. It all depends on how well they're assimilated, how well they're integrated into Europe's society and particularly into Europe's labour market. And unfortunately, the story so far is that asylum seekers, particularly from the Muslim world, have not been well integrated into Europe's economies. Whose fault is that? I think that's mainly the fault of the Europeans, the continental Europeans notice, because this is much less true in the UK. But the differential in unemployment rates in Scandinavia and in Germany, as well as in France, is really striking. Unemployment rates in some countries are double the, the native-born rate for foreign-born workers. So the labour markets and the welfare states are actually obstacles to the integration of, uh, of refugees and other immigrants into European economies. For the record, that was a short follow-up to questions Question two, it doesn't count as one of my ten. Here's number three. Why does Europe have such a big problem with economic growth? A couple of reasons spring to mind. One is undoubtedly demographic, but another reason is that each of the European states has in place a bunch of institutions that are legacies of the post-war era, welfare institutions, benefit traps, poverty traps of various sorts that are really holding back the process of job creation. Look at the Italian economy over-regulated to the point that it's almost not growing at all right now. That's fixable. These are man-made obstacles, but it requires political will to fix them. Four, Bundesrepublik Europe. What is that and is it a good thing? Angela Merkel used that phrase at a World Economic Forum meeting several years ago, and what it connotes is the German vision that all Europeans should become more German. It's a bit like, why, why can't a woman be more like a man from My Fair Lady? Why can't a Greek be more like a German? Why can't a Greek work as hard as a German? And that assumption, I think, is one of the problems that Europe has been grappling with, because South Europeans feel resentful of the German assumption that they should Germanize themselves, at least economically, if not culturally. Do you think she is the leader for our times? Angela Merkel is a hugely impressive politician, and she's certainly a very gifted tactician. But I have to say that I've found for some years her vision of Europe to be strangely lacking, compared, say, with Helmut Kohl's vision. He was chancellor when Germany was reunified after 1989. I think on the refugee question, she's trying to find that vision. Uh, but there's a severe danger uh, that she's overreached in uh, effectively opening Europe's gates to a million or two million migrants. Is the United States of Europe still a viable idea? I doubt it, and I always have doubted it. It's certainly not a viable idea from a British vantage point. The more Europe becomes a federal state, the more likely it is that the United Kingdom to leave it. Uh, I think we're going to end up not with ever closer union, but slightly looser union in the years to come. Britain, Brexit or no Brexit? No, it won't be Brexit. I think the referendum will look very close until it happens, but that's because opinion polls always predict close races. You may have noticed this in Canada too recently, <laughs> and they're nearly always wrong. Euroscepticism. Necessary? Dangerous? I think scepticism about the euro, about the project of monetary union, was completely warranted, and I felt it and I expressed it throughout the 1990s. And I think those of us who warned against monetary union were dead right. But scepticism about the project of European Union, or at least of European integration, I think is much less justifiable. If the whole thing broke up, uh, then Europeans would clearly be worse off than they are today. Political Islamism, how threatening to Europe? deeply threatening because it's increasingly embedded in European states uh, as a result of, well, more than a generation now of immigration and more than a generation of failure to integrate uh, immigrants from the Muslim world. Political Islam is a threat 
to the world. It's a threat in the Muslim world itself. Most of its victims today are themselves Muslims. Uh, the violent manifestations of political Islam are most dangerous in the Middle East, but they are growing in their importance in Europe. And unfortunately, only a few governments appear ready to stand up to them. One of them, I'm glad to say, is the British government. And finally, Ukraine, Greece, and the refugee crisis. Three enormous stories out of Europe over the past year or more. Is there one story or theme connecting all three of these crises? I think there is, and it is the problem that, that Europe is neither a United States uh, nor is it a collection of powerful nation states. It's a curious halfway house, a confederation that would much rather focus on its own internal problems than deal with external threats. The external threats that produced the refugee crisis were a crisis of governance after the Arab Spring in the Middle East, and Europeans really didn't want to get involved. The Russian threat that has led to the frozen conflict in Ukraine was another problem that Europeans really didn't want to grapple with. And until Europe learns how to exert power again, it's going to find itself the object of sentences and not the subject of sentences. Neil Ferguson, thank you. Thank you. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit supporttvo.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.